Bertrand and Vincent. Hello. Hi, nice to, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. <laughs> not, not live, but uh, it, it seems to work. Yeah. So, Good so idea. probably. So, um, yeah, how, how do we do that? Uh, your two speakers, I can um, just present the slides or I can uh, try uh, lay out like that one. You see now, you see me big uh, or probably that one. <laughs> Um, all right, just can show your slides. Just tell me how you want to have it. Uh, we're we're going to talk one after the other, so uh, I don't know. So I have you both in the in the talk, and then um, it's it's. I think that's it. Yeah. So I will disappear. Maybe you wait for another two minutes. I give you a sign like this to to start at right in time. Okay. It's okay. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? Hmm. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Okay. Seems just I'm I'm hard. back for a second. You see your slides now, and um, uh, yeah, I think it's 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 fine like that, like that. Yes, walking. I forgot. I have to introduce you, so I come back anyway. <laughs> you can stay with us all the long if you like. <laughs> Uh, we don't see my cue just to <laughs> Can you see how many people are there? Sorry? Can you see how many people are attending? No. No idea. Nobody <laughs> knows, so. <laughs> But um, no, if, if everybody who's here could write in the chat, we can probably see it, but uh, I have no clue. Stephen Feldman is here. <laughs> okay, it's time to start. Thank you for appearing. Thank you for reading my email because the chat crashed two minutes before we started, but you're in the right chat. That's perfect. Nice to see you again, guys. It's a pity that we can't have a beer later. For me, it's already beer time. I have nine o'clock in the evening, but... Uh, it will not keep me from listening to your talk. Uh, may I introduce you, Bertrand and Vincent from Auslandia. Auslandia is a really famous open source company in our community. I think you're really working on a lot of open source projects for a lot of years now. And um, yeah, we are happy to to hear your talk about in the source, how open source spirit is spreading among big corp. It's your stage. I disappear. Okay, well, thank you, Till, and hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. It's about inner source, uh, how development practices and open source concepts spreads in large companies. There will be two speakers, and then starting with a quick reminder of the free and open source freedoms, free as in free speech, not in free beer, run, study, copy, improve and release. Uh, this will be important in the following as inner source aims to spread the same liberties, but only inside organizations. Another reminder about software. Coding is not just code because software is more than code. It's also practices, design, documentation, DevOps, and users. Because in order to build a software, people have to code, of course, but also to install, test, use, request for innovations, complain about bugs, ask for help, build a number of packages, and so on. So all of these actions are led among communities of people who act together for building softwares 
we usually distinguish three major roles, users, contributors, and committers. Committers have technical ability to modify the code, to access on the repositories. The first committers are naturally the founders of the project, but depending on the structure of the open source project, managers can be designed, dis, dis, uh, designated by the community to vote or inside the steering committee, for, for instance. The essential point here is a way of transitioning from one role to another. It is done through technical allocations based on the recognition of the previous work of people. Uh, so we are talking about co-optations of co-optation of individuals. The recognition of a person's skills is possible thanks to the transparency of exchanges, transparency of pull requests, and code review. And code reviews themselves are necessary because committers make a personal commitment to their peers about the code quality when they merge peer. So what are the characteristics of an open source organization? They are distributed regardless of time zones, languages, or academic background. They grow as the interest for the project uh, grows or spreads. Nobody writes the rules before starting to work on the project. Work, package, work packages are led in an iterative way as other people will want to have a look on the results. The people who do stuff are visible and recognized. And another, another thing is everything must be written because there are a few places in open source projects to chat with colleagues and remember of the time zones. We therefore use specific tools to work with these constraints and we have a very strong written culture. So we can synthesize an open source organization with this scheme. The product, I mean the software, have its life, life cycle structured with branches, releases, roadmap, and committers have the technical right to modify the master branch and thus to develop the product. Contributors, well, they contribute by proposing evolutions within the project, like bug fix, features, documentations, and so on. Uh, and all these contributions will be reviewed and integrated by committers. This work requires time, and this time must be financed because important projects, those who work on, in, on an industrial scale and aggregate a large community, cannot work on a volunteer basis. These projects need the resources and time, that's why they have or should have sponsors and funders. So we have a product, which happens to be software. Uh, we have technical experts organized in such a way to guarantee the production process, the quality of the deliverables, and the respect of deadlines, and so on. And we have founders who will actually decide on the content of the product. The, what's inside the releases is not uh, decided by the committers or contributors directly, but rather by the funders, who give money to, the, money to the contributors and ask them to perform specific actions. The more interest the funders see in the product, the more resources they will allocate, and the more sustainable will be the product or the, the software. Yet the, the individual contribution is recognized over the corporation's funding. Uh, some examples now of organizations open source. Uh, the Linux project has a very unique organization because one man only runs the whole thing. It is uh, like an antithesis of the diagram I showed on the previous slide. Still, Linus Torvalds cannot review all PR for, uh, by himself, and he delegates some tasks to a few key people. Another way of dealing with free and open source projects is the QGIS way, or rather the OSGO way, uh, because the OSGO requires uh, its labeled projects to set up a governance system based on a steering committee. 
So it's uh, the way QGS works with a, a very uh, with a structured uh, community. I will lead this. Well, Vincent, if you want to. Yeah, um, so that was some reminders of what open source is and how it's structured and how it works. And now we are going to talk about inner source. So first is the definition of inner source. What is it exactly? Uh, it's defined by the use of open source software development best practices and the establishment of an open source like culture within organizations for the development of its software and for innovation. So it concerns uh, all organizations developing software. And so the main part of this definition are uh, the culture uh, and best practices. And the main uh, thing is within organization, which means inner source is like open source, but only inside a company. So it's different from open source because it doesn't respect the four freedoms uh, we stated above. And uh, but still, it's uh, it shares a lot of common characteristics uh, between uh, uh, with open source. So what are these characteristics for inner source? First, uh, it's based on transparency. So that's just like open source uh, culture. Uh, we have open access to code, to design, to decisions, to communication. Everything must be transparent, of course, uh, another time inside the organization. Um, collaboration is key as well. So we have to have explicit processes for development of written culture, shared tools, everything we, uh, must be done uh, so as people can collaborate in the best possible way. Um, then auto-organization is something really important as well. And this is where uh, InnoSource really is something uh, which is different from traditional culture in companies where, and especially uh, for big corporations where you have this very pyramidal way of doing things usually. Whereas InnoSource you know, lets um, auto-organization be a, a real thing. So the, you create a frame inside your InnoSource you know, program and then you allow auto-organization within that frame. You allow project to emerge, uh, structure to, uh, to emerge as well, decision process to emerge, uh, auto-organizing. And that's something very specific, which we know from open source uh, culture, but it's very unique uh, usually in big corporations. Other characteristics are the meritocracy, uh, duocracy, so those who commit uh, pilot the product's evolution. Um, you have, as Bertrand said, uh, this uh, uh, mode of organization, which is uh, you have uh, technical power and you have also uh, power through um, uh, resources. So uh, the steering of the software is made through contribution and technical skills. It's not through hierarchy. It's uh, because you have done something that you can uh, prove and you can measure that uh, you have the power to make the software evolve. Um, also, for meritocracy and bureaucracy, uh, one key point is incitation to contribute, to commit, and to collaborate. So, with peer review, votes, and have a constructive attitude, which is one of the uh, main points of uh, InnoSource program, usually. Uh, another point which is uh, very uh, strong in InnoSource programs is uh, measurement. Uh, that's something we don't see a lot in open source because uh, we don't have uh, accounts, uh, I would say, to, uh, to, to make to uh, investors or whatever. But uh, uh, as with InnoSource program, you have to, um, uh, to, to uh, make the results clear of uh, your program. So measurement is important and you have to identify uh, your uh, key indicators and misuse them. Uh, for example, you can count how many uh, pull requests are merged, how, how much time it, uh, it necessitates to merge pull requests in general, how many contributors you attract to your project, et cetera, et cetera. And that makes um, uh, measurement of uh, your InnoSource program success. And that's something which is uh, really important to have in an InnoSource program. Mm, then, um, but why would people do InnoSource uh, in a company? Um, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, the first one is usually to have a better time to market velocity. If you want to release software and release it soon, uh, then InnoSource software is a way to, and the, uh, the open source culture in general is a way to improve that velocity and, and reduce the time to market. 
Another great uh, aspect is to break the silo effect. Uh, in large corporations, usually the left hand doesn't speak to the right hand, and uh, you have people doing the same thing all over and over again, and they don't speak to each other because of this hierarchy. Um, and uh, that's something we want to break, and that's something we want to uh, to do. Uh, otherwise, we want to have transversal communication and inner source for that because of transparency, uh, because of different way of organization uh, is able to break this uh, silo effect and has very good uh, return of investment usually on this point. Uh, software quality improvement is another reason. Documentation quality also. Uh, cost re reduction can be a reason, but usually it's not the main reason and better innovation uh, as well, so improve uh, ideas and, and new things. And uh, last but not least is uh, human resources attractivity to be able to uh, at uh, attract uh, and hire better profile. Uh, we know that IT profile are very uh, demanded on the market, and uh, if you have an Inosus program and people can contribute to, to this Inosus program, well, uh, they will be uh, keener to uh, join your company. So that's a lot of reasons why uh, big companies today uh, tend to uh, try to adapt the open source culture and translate it into a, an inner source program. So who does that? Uh, actually, uh, some started more than 20 years ago, uh, more or less in the uh, year 2000. And the first ones to adopt inner source programs were, were IBM. And uh, when they uh, started to implement that program, they, uh, they saw a development velocity increase by 30%. They were uh, able to reduce this time to market I was talking about. And they, um, also, uh, it showed better creativity and innovation inside the software they were developing. Uh, Philips as well, another very big corporation, uh, they, uh, um, they saw technology reuse improvements, mutualization of resources, uh, software quality improvement overall, and also reduced time to market. And Zalando, I don't know if you saw the presentation earlier from uh, Felix Kunde, uh, is from Zalando doing some great Postgres stuff. Uh, they have an inner source program for long, and they also have an open source program. So they are full into the open source culture, and that's great. So it's, it's not a new thing, but uh, recently all large organizations are diving in. We can cite uh, Thales, Autodesk, uh, Societe Generale, French people, but SAP, Nokia, HP, Lucent, uh, Google, Microsoft, of course, PayPal, Walmart, T-Mobile, uh, all these big corporations, they all have a big Inosus program. And uh, recently, the last, let's say, three to four years, uh, we have seen a lot of corporation uh, adopting an, uh, an Inosus program. Um, in France, in particular, uh, we have some big companies uh, adopting Inosus, and uh, there's one thing which is uh, very special and not very frequent for big corporation uh, is that they have an intercompany working group on Inosus. So it's been created by Florence Zara, who is a, 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 an open source activist in France. And uh, they meet together uh, because they want to communicate about their Inosus program among peers. Uh, they have uh, uh, very strict rules of communication. They can communicate about uh, who does what, but uh, about what they do, but not about who does what. Um, and all these companies are sharing knowledge about their uh, culture and their Inosus program, which is very rare uh, among these companies who uh, have uh, most of the time, uh, a culture of secrets uh, better than a culture of sharing knowledge. Um, how to do an, op an Inosus program? There are multiple approaches according to your priority goals I was talking about earlier, but mainly we can identify three pillars, which are production, sharing, and communication, which are the three main things you want to integrate to an Inosus program. Um, as for uh, production, uh, so that's the way you produce the software and you have to uh, get inspiration from open source software and you have to have a good product management software, uh, quality tests, uh, CICD, deployment, a set of tools which is shared by all uh, developers inside your company and inside the Inosus program. 
As for uh, sharing, sharing is of course uh, very important. It has to be transversal through the company and what will you share? You will share binaries of your code, you will share your code, your documentation and generally your knowledge. All knowledge should be accessible to anyone inside the company. You have to delete all entry barriers, uh, you have to lower uh, the price to enter uh, the software development and you can also create internal communities uh, we call, some call them tribes, so as to create these uh, innocent communities inside your large company. And last but not least, communication is key. Uh, usually it takes uh, shape in form of an internal innocent portal where uh, anyone from the company can connect and can join a project, can contribute, etc. Um, you have to, you still need internal community management. I mean, uh, a portal is not enough. You have to have people uh, dealing with that, managing this portal and managing the community in general. Uh, be careful about internal communication and also uh, think about external communication. Go to conferences, uh, send your people to Phosphogy to talk about what you do, uh, write blogs, etc., etc. That's a very important thing to do. So um, some warning points because Inosus is can be complicated. Um, there are uh, problems or issues with licenses because you cannot directly use open source licenses if you want to restrict the software to uh, inside your company. So you need to write specific licenses and there is always a legal risk when, when you want to write a license. Um, you, you shouldn't do that generally, but uh, for this use case, uh, you can. Um, there can be social and fiscal laws issues. That's very complicated, but in some cases, when your company is international and you want to develop a free software in Australia, which uh, your uh, subsidiary in UK can use for free, uh, well, there are some laws saying you cannot do that for free. Um, so it's it's a bit complicated, but uh, you can deal with that. You have to have your legal team on, uh, on board as well. Um, Innosource is not uh, adapted for sensitive code of data. You have to uh, control uh, sensitive data, of course, so you cannot just uh, uh, do it uh, for everyone. And uh, do not forget that investment is needed. Innosource is just like open source. You, you cannot just throw everything on GitHub and say, oh, I got an Innosource program. Um, and one question is, uh, is Innosus a path towards open source or not? So um, la, that's a good question, actually. Uh, the question is, uh, is open source good or bad? Uh, person, can you uh, go on? So is it a good thing or a bad thing, after all, for, uh, for us uh, open source folks? Um, well, there are some good and some bad. As for the bad, well, it's not open source because it's not uh, shareable for everyone. So it's against uh, um, the, the rules of open source. Uh, but, and there is an open washing risk. Uh, companies saying, oh, we are very open, we do uh, inner source, so it's, it's really uh, open, but actually they don't do open source. Uh, there are a lot of almost open licenses and can lead to confusions for licenses. A uh, failed in source project can be bad, uh, can be a bad image for open source software. Uh, well, it's not the fault of open source or in source, but it's it's fault of uh, project, but uh, can be bad for images as well. And it could drain open source developer to close source development, actually. So that's for the bad parts. And uh, as for the good parts, there are some pretty uh, good parts. Uh, so that's a culture change. When you change the culture in your company to go towards open source, there is no return usually. So that's a very good thing. Uh, it also proves the quality of open source development methods. Uh, it's usually a ramp up to open source programs as seen in Zalando. They had an open source program and it transformed to an open source program as well. So that's really good. Uh, it trains new developers to open source culture. Uh, it, it gives a better understanding of the open source ecosystem and it uh, provides more collaboration and funding with open source projects because people on top of the companies understand how open source uh, works when they have an inner source program. And usually large companies have large budgets, so it can be really useful for uh, open source projects in the end. So I would say that's my personal opinion. You could disagree, but uh, I would say it's good and uh, spread it, spread in source, and then uh, switch to open source and first for G, of course. And so that was the presentation. So we are open to questions. I think we just 20 minutes. So uh, I hope we didn't uh, get too much.
You're absolutely perfect. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I noted some things from my uh, point of view. Um, this is uh, I, I really like this approach you 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 are talking about, and um, yeah, I, I especially I like the term product, <laughs> which is kind of French a little bit. <laughs> uh, I also like the inner source and uh, the open washing, which reminds me a little bit on green washing, which is a big issue. Probably you heard about that. But uh, I think you have great ideas, and I think that talk could have been a keynote as well. But um, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I have uh, noted one question um, from the board, uh, from the people. By the way, Anita is also listening, so that's great. Uh, that's all cuts award winner in from last last year, I think. So with uh, two years ago. With inner source approach, how do you make it easy to bridge the gap between internal silos and open source projects? For example, tips to persuade an organization to contribute improvements to FOSS projects and reuse them. Maybe you can a little bit talk about that. Yeah, from our experience, so uh, this, this talk is made because we, um, we did a strategy study and uh, we uh, went with a big company uh, talking uh, to them about open source and how to do uh, open source and how to change their future. And they wanted to have an inner program, so we went that direction. And uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, we were talking with um, uh, IT teams, uh, like change that culture and uh, they were doing a GIS application like an hypervision application so they needed maps and uh, what's uh, what's happened is that uh, the culture change made them aware that they were able to contribute to as uh, a software component they were using for their private application as uh, they were using QGIS uh, leaflets on Pioneers whatever lots of open source components and, and uh, because of this Innosis program, they were aware that they could actually contribute to the code. Uh, they could do it directly themselves, or they could also pay companies to uh, do it uh, for them. And uh, so this has two good aspects for open source. It's that it draws developers from inside the companies uh, to contribute to uh, to open source software and that new contributors are always welcome for uh, open source project and the second thing is uh, they can um, uh, free budgets and funding for open source software uh, for open source uh, service providers who in, in turn will uh, contribute to the software so uh, that's that's good on these two aspects yeah that's cool thank you um I think I'm not in the wrong path. There are not too many questions on the board, so I have another one. Uh, maybe it's it's a little bit. I know this is what what you presented is a really complicated issue. I I really know that from a customer that we have uh, for a couple of years now, and I know it took them or it took us uh, to 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 teach them that it really takes some time to switch from inner source to open source and how does it work they now two years later they realized that um, it's really important to be more open M maybe you can report on one or more examples you don't have to mention the customer but maybe you have similar problems uh, on, on on that or uh, stories that i think that would be interesting yeah, you're right that usually culture change is the thing which takes a lot of time. Um, what happens usually is that uh, the, the grassroots movement is, uh, is going towards open source and it takes a lot, lot of time to uh, convince management to adopt uh, inner source program or to contribute to open source. And um, what we start to see, and this is pretty new, and especially in large corporation, is that this grassroots uh, need for openness is uh, exists has been um, has been there for a while, but now as top management also has directive uh, to go open. Uh, they want uh, a few things. They want to go cloud, uh, cloud first. That's a thing, but that's not directly linked to open. <laughs> Even if uh, there are a lot of open source software in the cloud, so uh, they start to use Linux instead of uh, Windows Server, for example, it's still a, it's already a culture change. They're going to the cloud, and the second thing is they want to be more open 
for all the reasons I mentioned of why they, they want to go uh, more open. And, um, and, and that's something new, new that the top management has, uh, is aware of uh, th th this opportunity and the way to do things. And, uh, it's not in every company, and a lot of companies who are still stuck in the, 20, in the in year 2000. But uh, some of them, and surprisingly sometimes, uh, they are very open to culture change and they try to draw it. And it's actually, uh, sometimes they want to just change the company and refresh the company. And Inosus, having an Inosus program is also a mean to uh, a way to motivate people and to do this uh, culture change or, or general culture change in the company, having this Inosus program as a fresh thing, a new thing or exciting thing to do. So. Okay, one last question we have. It was in the chat from uh, Joe Walsh. Um, hi, hi, welcome to the... So she wrote, excellent. So at the developer level, it drives a mindset change, but product manager buy in to doing it. Cheers. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't get to the question. It kept on. I, I reread it. Excellent. So at the developer level, it drives a mindset change, but product yeah. manager buy in to doing it. Yeah. Um, well, the, the thing, the way uh, we introduce Inosus program into companies, or uh, uh, one thing is uh, the developers and the IT teams, and usually they are very exciting to go into it because it's uh, it's new things, it's new technologies, new uh, new freedom actually. So that's that's kind of easy. And as far as the manager part, uh, we have to convince uh, that there is another way of organizing teams. <laughs> also another way of directing projects. And uh, what we, um, uh, from our experience, uh, we, we start with, uh, okay, uh, think about all your big projects which failed this uh, last 10 years. So very large IT project with millions of euros spent and in the end, the application was just crap and not corresponding to uh, what the user uh, wanted. So remember that and you don't want to do that. So let's uh, do it another way. And uh, that's the point where the Inosus program is really coherent with a new agile methodology for development. And you can talk to a manager about agility now. They are now uh, managers want to do agile. You, you have to work agile. Uh, you, do, you want to do Scrum and etc. And Inosus and open source in general is much more coherent with uh, this agility thing than uh, what they were doing before, uh, like the waterfall way of developing software. So uh, that's a way to convince managers uh, to adopt that kind of program. Okay, thanks. Uh, late, there was another question. I put it in the chat. Maybe you can you can answer in the chat because we run out of time here and we have other opportunities to, to have more discussion on that. Uh, I just 